Bonjour, mes amis, et bienvenue en Pandu dans le Lume. Hello, friends. If this is your first time here, welcome. Thank you for coming. I'm pleased to meet you. If you've been here before, thank you for returning. I'm truly honored. Friends, if you are a returning visitor, you know from my attempt at a French introduction that this is my series in which I use Terre de Marse or antique Italian decks to answer a question that I pull from my larger Rider Waite Smith based tarot spread, which I've already done this week. And this week's tarot spread was called The Benefit of the Storm. That was my title for it, The Benefit of the Storm. When there are storms in our lives, what is the benefit? And if you're interested in that video, I think it was a very profound spread. I'm not going to say that I was the best reader of the spread, that's for you to determine, but it was a very profound spread. And if you're interested in looking at that spread, take, checking it out, I'll put a link, a card, I'm sorry, in the frame above for you to click on and hop over to take a look at that. So in that spread, there were, uh, as usual, there were four questions. And the last question, not the last question, yes, the last question was, what can I simplify? What can I simplify? And in response to that question, there were two cards. One of them was easy-ish to understand, the Eight of Pentacles in Rider Waite Smith. It's a Pentacles card, the Eight of Pentacles. And that's the card of tasks and daily chores and doing the work. And I can understand simplifying that. But the card on the other side was the Nine of Swords the card in that system of worry, anxiety, nightmares, and simplifying worry, simplifying nightmares. Okay, I could see why we want to do that. I would certainly love to simplify my anxiety. I would love to simplify my worries. But how the heck do we simplify worry and anxiety? That's what I wanted to know. How do we do that? I mean, there are certainly counselors we can go to see, there are clinicians we can go to see, we can go to a spiritual advisor, a counselor, and get help, certainly. But we've also got a resource of the Tarot, and I wanted to see what Tarot de Marse would have as an answer for how do we simplify worry and anxiety? So that was the question. How do we simplify worry and anxiety? So. Friends, in just a moment, I will show you that question. This one's a very short question, right? How do we simplify worry and anxiety? And the three cards that came up in response. Now, the deck I was using for this was my, and I'm looking around to see it. Just a moment. I thought I had it closer to me, yeah? The deck I was using is this my um, Noble, my Jean Noble reproduction by Artisan Tarot, which I got in this beautiful, beautiful, beautiful uh, green velvet pouch. It's a very cute, very small, very easy to shuffle deck. I have another Noble deck, which is also small, but the cardstock is thicker and it's a little bit more difficult to shuffle. It kind of hurts my fingers a little bit if I have to shuffle it frequently in one short period of time. So this deck is like playing card, uh, casino quality cardstock, and it shuffles beautifully. And the pouch is lovely. So if you're interested in this deck, there will be a link in the description box below it's for you to hop over, take a look at it and purchase it if you'd like, because it is still available. I think the pouches are still available too. So just so you know, I don't get any financial remuneration if you do use the link. It's just for your convenience. Okay, so again, I will show you the question. I will show you the cards. Let's take a look. Wow, right? Wow. The four, the three cards, I'm sorry, I've got fours on the brain now. The three cards that came up in response to the question were, from left to right, 
the Four of Swords, the Knight of Cups, and the Four of Wands. A lot of fours in there, right? So, the first thing that comes to mind is, how do I simplify worry and anxiety? Calm the F down is kind of what, I'm sorry, that's kind of my first impression of this spread. I'm without reading it in depth and carefully, my first overall impression of this spread was calm the F down, <laughs> which seems a little bit cheeky for the tarot to respond with, but um, the fours are the cards of stability, right? They're the first truly stable number in the suits. Now the one is the seed, the spark, it's the, the beginnings it needs. They need to be nourished, they need to be nurtured, and they can peter out, they can die off fairly easily, but it's the first seed, right? The two, it splits, there's a little bit of a dichotomy going, there might be some, a moment of pause there in the twos as well. The threes, there's a new spark, yeah? There's that third thing, the couple meets and produce a child, which is also a very active card. The four is okay. We've got our base now. So the card, the fours are the card, the first base that we have in the progression of the suits. So again, my first impression was calm the down, right? So that's not really the end of the reading. Let's look at the cards from right to left. Now I'm going to go from right to left. Can you guess why? Because. Because the human figure in this spread, the Knight of Cups, is riding from the right to the left. So, we're going to read in the direction of sight for the figure in the card. If there were no figures in the cards, I would just go left to right. But this time, right to left. And we're going to start with the Four of Wands. The Four of Wands. The card of routine for me. Now, Four wands are passion and the work we do, but the four, it's stable. Yeah, it's stable. It's repetitive. Um, it's steady. There's perseverance here as well. And developing those habits, developing the routine, developing the steadiness. So you'll notice that the beginning of the answer to our question about these emotional and mental disturbances. The first part of the answer is not an emotional one. It's not a, a mental one. It's not a sword suit. It's a wand suit. And it's saying, focus on the things we're doing here in the moment. Focus on routine. The steadiness of daily life. And this can be a benefit in a lot of situations. Um, I've heard people who were counseling those in depression, giving one piece of the therapeutic process as developing a routine. Now, having a time to get up and go for a walk, for example, whether it's two minutes or five minutes or 10 minutes, but it's the distance isn't important. It's establishing a routine, getting a pattern going, not a thought pattern, not an emotional pattern, but getting the body up and moving as a routine. And our routines, our daily routines, ground us in the present. And that's one step for, to, towards simplifying our emotional and mental disturbances, right? The Four of Wands can also be desire becoming reality. Which is a little bit kind of, which is a little bit the Three of Wands, but the Three of Wands is that first burst into creation. The Four is the 
phys uh, physicalization of it, yeah, where it becomes fixed, steadfast. So that desire that manifests and becomes here in a stable physical form. Not the first expression of the desire into manifestation, but the, the grounded manifestation. It's also sexual expression with a partner, with a stable partner. Now, not a one-night stand, but, you know, sexual frequent interactions can help us as well. Having a physical interaction with someone we love on a regular basis can help, again, ground us emotionally as well as mentally. And assuming our power. What does that mean, assuming our power? We can say that we have power, say, I am powerful. I am the divine manifested as a human being. I am powerful. That, those are wonderful thoughts and a wonderful sentiment. But we want to assume our power. To and more than embrace it, to become the power. And I'm not saying power like um, becoming a superhero, but assuming the power of that we have as eternal beings having a human experience. And when we can assume that power, perhaps after settling into our routine and seeing that, okay, I've got this routine going, I see that in a repetitive process, I do the thing, I get a result. I do the thing, I get a result. Then I can start feeling that, yes, I do have an effect on the world. I do have an effect on the physical world. I have power here in the world. And then I can assume that power. And now I can begin doing the work of simplifying. Because first I need to get my power back. In order to simplify my worries or my anxieties, I need to res I need to get my power back. I've given it all away to other stuff. I've given it away to, to sadness. I've given it away to worries, to anxieties, to fears. I've given my power away. The fours are reminding me of a way for me to regain my power, to draw my power back. And then we go into the Knight of Cups. Finally, we've got an emotional card here. Now we've got an emotional card of love. Yeah? The Knight of Cups is following the heart. It's romantic, surely. Now the eternal romantic, the one carrying a bouquet of flowers to the first date. The one carrying a bottle of wine to their loved ones to share, perhaps in a picnic in a park, that romantic one. But it's definitely Knight of Cups, yeah? the actively romantic one. They know what they do want, they know what they want to do, what they can do, and they go out and they do it. They do their romance. It's also the idealist, right? Not the naive idealist of, of the page, but the active idealist of I am going to go out and I'm going to make love. Yeah, make love that way too. But I'm going to create love in the world. The idealist of the romantic. But also following the heart. And once I've resumed my power, I've, re I've taken back my power, I have reassumed my power, I can then begin to follow my heart. And as I follow my heart, the other stuff can start falling into the, in behind me. I can move past it. It's also love in action. And when I, as much as we can bring love into action, the other things, the negative worries, fears, depressions, all of that can begin to dissolve into the past. 
not into the past like something that will never return. The potential is always there. And that's not something that we need to be afraid of. Because there is a potential for a depressive state in the future does not mean that we have to be afraid of it. We can learn the tools, we can learn the patterns, we can learn the behaviors that help us to move through that depression, through the anxiety, through the worry, before it grows into an ugly monster that eats us. Does that make sense? And that's part of love and action, being able to live love in action. Sincere love. Now this, the night is not, okay, sometimes the night can be um, reckless and insincere, can be doing love for love's sake, not with, not for the sake of interaction with the other, but for the sake of being the romantic, the florid one, the, the, the poetic one, being, being the romantic. That is, that can be part of the night as well, but it can also be sincere love in action. And I think that's the direction that this, these cards are pointing us in. It's also being able to ask forgiveness and making things right. So once we've, when we've been in that worried state, when we've been in the state of anxiety, we can do some damage. Whether we want to or not, we can do some damage. We can lash out at others because we are uh, reactive. Have you, I've done that. I've been so worried and anxious that I have snapped at somebody else. I have been less than kind, less than loving, less than understanding. And so this night is also here to remind us that, remind us that once we've got our stable base with the four of wands, we might be able to now go out and ask for forgiveness and make things right. Be, do the loving action of mending relationships. So now we've got the knight riding out into the Four of Wands because now we can move into our mental state again. We can move into our mental space again. And the Four of Swords, I'm sorry, did I say Wands? The Four of Swords. The Four of Swords is a stable mental space. And you see Four Swords there, we see the large, flower in the center. Some people might see this flower as constricted. I don't see the flower as constricted. I see this flower as burst forth, filling space. There's a stable space for the, for the flower to grow, and that flower has grown and filled its space. It doesn't look like it's constricted and weak and about to wilt. It looks full and luscious to me. So the Four of Swords, it can be caution and conservatism and analysis, certainly. And maybe we want to do that. Maybe doing the work of analysis can be part of simplifying our worries, because if we clearly look at what is presented to us, we analyze what is presented to us, we don't have the time, space, the distraction to go into worry or anxiety. When we're actually doing stable analysis, our minds are full. There's no space for anxiety or worry. It could also be systematic thinking, rationalism. And we move with our cup. So this isn't necessarily a cold rationalism because we still got our cup. We've, we're still that Knight of Cups. But the Knight of Cups can also wear the cloak of systematic thinking as well and rationalism. And can learn to think with maturity. Instead of the frightened child way of thinking, we can think with maturity, with our experiences behind us, knowing that we're still here. We've gotten through it before and we'll get through it again. And maybe we can do more than just get through it. Maybe we can 
open to it. Maybe we can learn from it. Maybe we can grow through it. Maybe we can allow whatever is happening to be the thing that fertilizes us. Because a lot of that manure is good fertilizer. The mind acting on reality, instead of on fantasy, on fear. Now, we can simplify our mind to work on reality rather than flying off into fantasies of destruction and death and breakups and losing jobs and all of those diverse and multitudinous fears and worries that are possible, potential, but are not real, are not real. So an organized, stable intellect, the Knight of Cups rides, takes their first steps off of the platform of routines of steadiness, of developed habits, and brings their emotional love into the world, and assumes the cloak of rationalism, focusing on reality instead of fantasy. And in this way, we simplify the worries and anxieties that we are um, heir to, not heir to, but that are possible. And know that if we do accidentally slip into worry, anxiety, depression, we know a way to get ourselves out. We know that we can get out because we've gotten out before. And again, we're not talking about clinical conditions here. A clinical condition is a condition that asks for a clinical solution. Right now, we're talking about the daily lives of average people going through the common worries, fears, anxieties, sadnesses, and sometimes edging into depression. Non-clinical depression. Does that make sense? And we start, where do we start? We don't start with the mind. We don't, don't start with the heart. The tarot is reminding us to start with the action, with the body, a somatic beginning to simplify. First, we simplify what we're doing. And then we can work on simplifying and carrying forth our love into the world. And then we can, as we are bringing forth love into the world, our attitude has become more positive naturally. And as it becomes more positive naturally, then we can focus on reality instead of on these fears and fantasies of the future. Or fears and fantasies of the past as well. We're not only worried or anxious about the future, we can be worried or anxious about the past as well. Does that make sense? If it does, hit that like button. I would love to hear that you, or see, that you've watched and this has meant something for you. And it helps the channel. And subscribe to my channel if you haven't subscribed. Hit the alarm bell so you get notification of when I upload videos. I do at least two a week. And also, uh, share this around. If you know somebody who's interested in learning, reading, Tarot de Marseille, or you know somebody who this kind of discussion might be beneficial for, share on another platform as well. And comment below. I would really love to hear from you. What did you think? Does that make sense? Does it not make sense? Do you think I'm talking out of my butthole? Let me know. And friends, now. Oh, and also, also, I forgot. <laughs> if you're interested in a private reading, I'm up for it. Are you up for it? If you are, I'll have a link to my Instagram account below. Hop over there, send me a direct message, and we can work it out. We'll get you a personal reading from me. And friends, now, as always, I wish you love, joy, well-being, 
and pure awareness. Thank you.